Choosing saxophone was a, it's still a mysterious thing to me. I don't know how it just came up. I don't because I don't remember seeing any jazz videos be, before picking up saxophone. See, so uh, I I must have heard saxophone obviously, but I didn't really think it through. So uh, before saxophone, my father tried to you know uh, introduce me to other instruments. From the pop song, you had Pink Floyd. Then heard jazz but didn't play jazz then heard more 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 jazz but couldn't play jazz I, I mean I wanted to but I couldn't then I learned a little bit more I started covering very basic not basic but they call it jazz standards which are the songs that, that are so famous in jazz that a lot of people have covered the song so songs like autumn leaves and summertime so I covered those songs previously he wasn't very keen on you know uh, buying the sax because it's because my past, you know, because I've left so many instruments and all. So, but I, I showed the interest. I, I learned it more and more, um, and I eventually got the saxophone. As far as the complexity goes, um, structurally, I, I should say that it's the most complex. I should say you've got keys that are opening some different valves and the key, keyholes. So, yeah, it is. But afraid wise, yeah, I mean, when I started blowing into it uh, it was quite difficult and that time i didn't know whether i would you know accomplish playing the you know playing task or not so, so i started uh, playing in 2012 yeah so the band uh, our band is called typewise it was formed in uh, so the name like the official forming of the band didn't happen in 2013 but that was the time when all the members of the current band most of the members of the current band were in so 2013 uh, the Raag, Shwetang, Sahil, all of them together organized this show called Amda Jazz and Blues Festival. We had a great time and I, I can imagine how much trouble they went through for that particular festival because in 2015, I was one of the members in the organizing committee also. It's a difficult task, I mean. I mean, we are not event managers. Organizing a festival is way different than playing in it. At the end of the day, when you, we are, when you finish the show and we, when you hear the audience response, you're just, you know, it's, it's worth it. It's totally worth it. This is the one riff that you know got me into the band. So I love uh, very smooth, soft, uh, very uh, what do you call it? those jazz standards have that feeling like uh, the old jazz standards. They were very slow. Uh, the subgenres of jazz are so many now that the the definition of jazz ha is not there anymore. So for me, jazz, uh, I don't know, uh, maybe a way of playing probably would be uh, jazz. I can't probably say that, okay, this is jazz, this is jazz, this is blues, this is jazz, this is metal, this is jazz, this is jazz, this is jazz. But maybe the way he plays, I can say, okay, yeah, that sounds more like, it sounds very jazzy. The band is subgenre wise, I can, I can say it doesn't make jazz, but we do cover stuff and we do play stuff which is different kind of jazz. We just don't stick to one type of jazz. Jazz uh, in Ahmedabad. Well, uh, that's uh, actually, it's not that bad now, you know. So there have been jazz artists coming. Uh, Shari Khasan recently came. They, they, these people are like proper jazz artists. Shari Khasan is a proper jazz pianist. Your Saskala is a proper jazz trumpet. You know. Warren Bird is a proper jazz keyboardist. So we had these bands coming to Ahmedabad and obviously we, uh, I took got influenced by those people like seeing them play it's a uh, first of all it's a big thing you know that they are lovely jazz artists are playing here in Andhavan and then you get inspired okay wait that, that's they're playing really really nice stuff 
Jazz and blues in Ahmedabad by Ahmedabad is you know mostly I love uh, the slow part of jazz. Mm. I I love soloing in fast also. So mm. that's what uh, band thing is you know that yeah. there's there are two teams at times you know there's I and Nayan at times and there is the entire team Raj and all. Yeah. But we have fun obviously we. we have fun. I try to read about jazz. I try to read the scales of jazz. You know, uh, so jazz scales are very different than uh, normal major minor scales. So you've got added things in uh, jazz scales. You've got something called the bebop scale. We've got something called the the this major seven, minor seven. Those are normals, but bebop and blues scales are the the main ones. You know, so it's those scales. They add a lot of chromatic notes. The chromatics chromatics are mostly like you know playing the wrong note at the right time kind of stuff. You don't have that particular note. But you take it in a run or take it in a the particular moment so that it embellishes the the entire structure of the music. So that's that's there, you know. When I say music is a passion, I genuinely mean it. I just don't say it like a T-shirt coat, you know. Music, I guess it's a raw, very raw emotion, you know, because you sit there and you're just listening to it. I mean, there's no like th there's no investment that you are doing in it by reading about it or by when you read it and when you research on it. You get extra, you know, more enjoyment. That's true. But even if you are just listening without any edu uh, any knowledge, like zero knowledge about jazz music or any certain type of, without any music knowledge, even if you listen to that particular thing and if it is really good, you will love it, despite of the background and you don't, you might not know about that particular music. So yeah, it's that raw emotion also. So about apart from passion, it's that raw emotion that comes out from music. My inspiration and the goals uh, wise, I would say that when I started music, uh, sa learning saxophone at, at least, I guess maybe the inspiration was Dick Parry, who was the saxophonist for Pink Floyd. I guess that was the that was the one thing that hit me that oh yeah, saxophone yeah, that's an unusual instrument, isn't it? Um, I don't have a very far. I'm not a very far sighted person. So for a short term goal, I there's a obviously there's a uh, mental, you know, limit. I've there's a there's a borderline I've selected that after I play like this, I might be I'm I'll consider myself as less decent musician or something like that. So I've got those borderlines in my head that okay. So my short term goal is you know to learn way more than what I am doing right now. So that's the goal. L long term goal. I just want to play really good music. Actually, late. I mean there are musicians they start at the age of six or nine, you know and now they have reached some, I don't know what levels to call them, you know. But so I started late, and I'm still picking up on a lot of things. So financially, yeah, I'm, uh, I've given it. A, I'm giving it a try. It's, I'm risking something actually. Here. India is not the place to, you know, for music and money. They don't go hand in hand in India. So I worked in a lot of uh, for sorry, a lot of regional films in Gujarat. You give those sounds of the five sequence, the bishum, bishum, and the swish, swash, and the footsteps, and yeah, it's, it's. I mean, it sounds funny. I mean, it sounds funny when you say it dry out like that. But I guess without those particular sounds, your film won't have that kind of effect, also. <laughs> so I gave a demo gig here, uh, this restaurant, the uh, charcoal barbecue, and the response was really good. So he he was pretty happy, and he actually doubled the shows and all. So I'm also pretty happy because of <laughs> that particular fact. You know, I, I'm sorted for financially.